In this video, we'll cover off seven neglected ways to make bells, starting with this one, selling flowers. Gold roses sell for 1,000 bells each or 1,200 with the Bell Boom ordinance and grow back after two days. They'll fetch the same amount as the elusive blue rose and are way easier to get. To make gold roses, just start with red seed roses and water them. They'll make blacks 25% of the time. And no, before you comment, you don't grow them with poppers. That's just for fun. Once you have blacks, you can either clone them or keep breeding. Then just water them with the golden watering can, which you can get when you get five stars. If you want to know how to get three stars, check my link video at the end of this one. Again, not with poppers. With time, you can have a farm of golden roses which looks both amazing and they'll fill your pockets and bank accounts with a similar color. Best thing is, in just two days, you can do it all again. I like to pluck every second row to ensure I've got a constant flow of cash. As mentioned before, the blue rose is worth the same, but as you can see, it's a little bit more complicated. I've got a video that explains how to get them. Note the difference though is blue roses can be cloned, whereas gold roses can only be bred. Thought I'd point that out. Want to make even more than this for 10 blue roses? Just craft them. Crafting them into either a wreath or a crown doubles their worth. There are four recipes to learn for these two petal of gold roses and blue, like the wreath and the crown. This is what you get back after you craft 10 roses into a blue rose wreath. It's worth noting that selling at the box outside of Nook's Cranny will dock you 20% of their worth. So I'd recommend only selling like this if you're desperate or doing hard mode. Another neglected method is crops, which come in six different variants. Potatoes, wheat, tomatoes, sugarcane, pumpkins in four colors, and carrots. These sell for 350 bells each produce and are a great way to make recurring bells. You just have to remember to water them every day to ensure you get a max of three produce each plant. Once harvested, it takes three days for the produce to grow back, so I'd recommend splitting your harvesting into thirds to ensure a smooth bell flow. There is something else in the game that grows three produce per uh, plant is the fruit trees and you don't have to water them just like the crops they take three days to regrow their fruit and they're worth 500 bells each fruit only if they're not your native fruit however even though fruit has a better return per produce the harvesting density isn't as high i call this bells per square let me show you this is how i tend to like my trees they're close enough to see the fruit fall when you shake the tree and visually pleasing. However, you can plant trees closer together. You've got to leave at least one spot between each tree, otherwise the game won't let you plant it. So let me replant my fruit trees in the most condensed way possible. And this is in a 5x5 plot. For this group of non-native 9 trees, we can make 13,500 bells over 3 days, giving us 540 bells per square. Let's head over to an equivalent plot of 5x5 squares with crops. Crops can be planted right next to each other, so a lot more dense. Even though these are 350 bells each, this plot of 25 plants will double the same square of trees, coming to an impressive 1,050 bells per square. And even if you don't water every day and only get two produce like this lot, you'll still make more than the trees with 17,500 or 700 bells per square. Since it's over three days, the effective bells per square is a third of these figures, which is still less than the 1,000 bells per square for gold and blue roses, or an effective 500 bells per square over two days. There are six rocks on your island which you can hit every day to get stuff out of it like stone, iron, clay and occasionally gold nuggets. One of these rocks though is a money rock. You might underestimate that this is 16.1k that you can get every day. Hey, that rhymes and to add to it every time you play. If you visit Katrina on Harv's Island before hitting your rocks, she might occasionally give you the good luck with money which gives you a bonus 10k per rock. Factor in though that you might have to fork out 10k if she gives you bad luck that day. However, 
Where it really comes into effect is good luck for a given day going to a mystery flight for Money Rock Island. Each rock gives you 16.1k but add 10k per rock when you've got money luck and you'll walk away with an extra 50k. A familiar idiom states that money doesn't grow on trees. Wrong! In Animal Crossing it does! Let me remind you of the glowing spot. Each day you'll see this faint little glowing spot which if you dig up you'll earn 1k of bells. If you put the bells back in it'll grow into a little money tree. This tree will return three times what you put in. So with 1k this little tree will grow back 3000 bells. I hear what you're thinking, wait, awesome, let's put 99k bag of bells in there. Unfortunately the game limits to how much you make back on this. You'll only get three 99k bells 30% of the time. The other time you'll only get 30,000 bells back. So your best bet is to put in 10,000 bells into the hole to guarantee you a profit. You've got Sherb's assurance of this. What I haven't tried is planting 99k on days that you've got good luck with money. If you've done this and found that you get 3 lots of 99k bags, let me know in the comments. As a segue to this, on days that you've got good luck with money, you'll get 5k out of the golden hole. So this is your cue to try your luck with 99k. Anyway, back to the trees. I keep this little plot of money trees which I keep on rotation. As one grows to show bells on the tree, I cut it down and plant a baby tree. Next day, I'll have money growing on trees. Another daily source of money are assessed fossils. Each day you'll find four cracks in the ground that are usually fossils. Sometimes they'll be gyroids if you're three stars or more and after it rains. If ever you skip days you might find more than four fossils. Just have them assessed by Blathers in the museum. I'd recommend donating them if you haven't yet but any surplus can be sold back for a decent amount of bells. This lot fetched me 22k and just to prove the point here's what I got from the four fossils for the next day. Once you've upgraded Nook's Cranny from the smaller to the bigger one, you get a chance at two different hot items for that day. Depending what recipes need, this can be sometimes fairly lucrative. Definitely keep a lookout for the donation box which is a cool little money maker. Check out the linked video at the top right and in the description below to how to exploit that. Money sometimes flies over our heads and it comes in the form of yellow balloons. While yellow balloons tend to contain bells, that's not always the case. It's a good idea to keep an ear out along with an eye out for these yellow or not. For me, they tend to spawn on the first and sixth minute of each 10 minute cycle, like 1201 or 1216. Other reports state that it's on the minute ending of 4 or 9. It might vary on the hemisphere. Here's a bonus one for you, deep sea diving. To do this you'll need a wetsuit which you can buy from Nook's Cranny to own it straight away otherwise you might have to order it from the ABD in the resident services. The best part about this one is that on average the sea creatures are worth 3.3k and doesn't require a tool like a net or a rod that will break with time. I earned this much with just a few minutes in the water. If you want even more ways to make bells check the video on screen along with the description box below for more videos mentioned in this one. Hope you consider joining the nation, AG Nation that is.